Hi, everybody. So just to hopefully erase the uh, debacle that was the last lecture, I'm going to give you a short snippet or version of what I really wanted you to get from the last end of lecture. And let me apologize for uh, the confusion at the beginning. I, I, I'm sorry for that. So anyhow, let's move on. So what I've written here are kind of, it's kind of a summary of where we were at. So this chapter is about gene interactions. This is chapter six. And there are two main parts to this. The first part is talking about how alleles can interact with one another. And alleles means they're on the same gene. And so the various types of interactions we discussed were alleles can be codominant with respect to one another. One can be dominant over the other. One can be incompletely dominant over the other. There could be lethal combinations, etc. So we talked about those types of interactions and what they would look like. And we also talked about how our definition of those interactions can change depending on what level of phenotype we are looking at. So that was the whole thing about the sickle cell anemia. <laughs> um, if we're looking at the level of the molecule, of the cell, of the organism, it, how you define these interactions can change. Okay, so it's not a static definition. Okay, so we're moving on to multiple gene interactions. And the first part of this, this section is to define whether or not you are dealing with multiple genes. So let's look at how that analysis is done. Okay, so for this analysis, it involves having two mutants. So, so let's say for argument's sake that there is a flower that is normally pink, as you see in the picture, and I have acquired two mutants that are both white. Now my big question is, are these two mutants white because they are mutated in the same gene, this right here, or are they both white because they're mutated in, they just happen to be mutated in different genes that make them the same phenotype, that make them white? So let us see what that would look like. Okay, to answer if my two mutants are both mutated in, this, in the same gene or they mutated in different genes, we are going to have to cross homozygous mutants. So those two white mutants that I was talking about, we have to make sure that they are true breeding, or in other words, homozygous, and we're going to cross those two white mutants together. So because there are two possible outcomes here, one in that it could be due to the same gene, or two, they are both mutant because they are mutated in different genes, that's why I have these two different situations. So the first line, I put P because this is the parental generation. This is our first cross. So if I do that cross, here are my possibilities. On one hand, if I cross my two mutants together, I may get back in my F1, my first generation, all white flowers, which would be all mutants. Or I could get back in my first generation, my F1, all pink flowers, which would be normal. So depending on what result I get, this tells me something. And let me show you what each result would mean. If we take the first cross on the left, where we got back all white offspring for the first generation, all mutant for the first generation, we can explain this by the following. Our parents were both mutant. They were homozygous mutant. So if they were both homozygous mutant and mutant in the same gene, we're going to call it the W gene, so they were both mutant in that gene, same gene, then obviously the first generation or all the offspring that could come from this parental cross would be mutant offspring. That's the only possibility. So that's if they are both mutant in the same gene, the W gene. So let's take the right hand side, the other possibility where the same cross, which is where we took our two homozygous white flowers and we crossed them together and we got back all pink offspring in the first generation, all normal offspring. How could we explain this if this happened? Well, the, pos the explanation for this result is that they are mutant in different genes. 
So if you look, I drew two different genes, two different recessive uh, homozygous genotypes. In the first flower, it's mutant in the W gene to give it the white color. And in the other flower, it's mutant in the F gene to give it the white color. So this could happen. There could be two different genes that could lead to the same phenotype. We could have that, absolutely. So how does that lead to pink offspring? Well, in order to show you this, I have to make sure that I keep track of both of those genes for both parents. So let me fix their genotypes to reflect both genes. Now if you look at the parental genotypes of the two white flowers on the right, you'll see that they, I'm keeping track of both the F gene and the W gene for both of them. So the first flower is only mutant in the W gene to give it the white phenotype whereas the flower on the right, the second parent, is only mutant in the F gene to give it the white phenotype. Because again, this is to demonstrate if both of these flowers were mutant in a totally different gene to give it the white phenotype, if that were the case, you would expect all pink offspring or all normal offspring, and I'm showing you why you would get all normal offspring. So look at my parents, okay? My first parent, right here, this parent right here, when it's going to make offspring, it, can, it has to give one of each gene, one copy of every gene to its offspring. So in this case, it's got to give a copy of the F gene. And the only possible F allele that it can give is a dominant one. So we might as well give our offspring one dominant F, because that's going to come from that parent. Now the other parent has to give an F allele too. You've got to get one from each parent. So the parent on the right, uh, this parent right here, can only give a recessive F. So that means any offspring are going to get a recessive F from that parent. So now look, our first gener generation offspring are always going to be heterozygous for the F gene, which means they will not be white due to two recessive Fs. They, they will be pink according to the F gene but we still have to look at the W gene because apparently you can also be white if you have two mutant W's. So let's see what we would get for the first generation offspring. From parent one, we are only going to be able to get a recessive W from that parent. So let's write down a recessive W. From parent number two, the only thing parent number two can give is a dominant W. So we have to put that down. So all of our first generation offspring are going to be heterozygous for the W gene. So now take a look. Let's look at the full genotype. Your heterozygous F and heterozygous W. Both F and W, if you were homozygous recessive for either one, you could have been white. And we know that because if we look at the parents, again, Right? Parent number one was white because it was homozygous recessive for the W gene. Parent number two is white because it was homozygous recessive for the F gene. Our offspring are not homozygous recessive for either one. Therefore, the first generation offspring, the F1, are all pink. This is called complementation. If you cross your two mutants together, and you get back in your F1 all normal offspring from two mutant parents, we know that they complemented one another. The normal F copy allele here masked what was gonna get what was gonna come from that parent. And then the normal W genes here masked what was gonna come from the other parent. So you became or you created heterozygous offspring for both genes, so they're all normal. Complementation. Complementation means that your two mutant parents are mutant because they are mu mutated in two different genes. Now this is different from what we got back in the first case, which is we got back all mutant offspring. That means no complementation. And that means that the two mutants 
are mutated in the same gene. And that would answer our main question.